Hello everybody, I'm Jess here from Blooming Crafty and um, we are here today um, to have a talk about cutting flowers from your garden. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of background about myself and our business um, and how we've kind of moved forward a little bit recently um, and providing many more cut flowers um, and trying to do as much British as we can um, and to inspire you to get out in your gardens um, and to do some cutting and potentially some planting. Um, so over the lockdown I'll just give you a little bit of history about myself and really what's kind of brought me um, to the forefront of British. So um, the business, my business has been running for nearly 10 years. I'm in my 10th year now. I started off as a florist, um, so I was a shop florist. I um, had my own little shop and we did a whole lot of wholesale. Um, so Dutch and Holland products um, coming in. Um, I've always liked slightly unusual flowers. Um, I've always aired towards British, uh, not British, but kind of your country style, um, very just cut from the garden, loose arrangements. Um, I kind of get so excited about people that are getting married and they're looking for a really pretty English bouquet, um, all of that kind of style. Um, so I've always, I've always had an interest um, in unusual things, um, pretty dainty country meadow style of flowers and it was probably back um, about seven years ago and um, that I first met um, a grower so I started my business when I was 21 had a heck of a lot to learn and I was literally thrown in the deep end with a shop and I met uh, my fabulous grower who we've been through um, lots of um, ups and downs as you probably know if you're gardening um, and growing if you're in um, interested in gardening or plants or flowers you will understand kind of the battles um, and the absolute joy that it brings um, at the same time so my grower um, popped in and she was literally starting her business um, her in that year um, she's since I've known her she's grown from her garden she has tried growing from an area of land as well and that was particularly hard work and then she now grows in a little plot in my garden as well so I've got a variety of flowers to show you from her and um, her business is called Ivy and George flowers and um, so we'll share those on our page um, she's lovely and she's really looking to expand um, that kind of area. Um, so I remember she bought in um, these absolutely stunning fox gloves to me, not this colour, she had a white one and he had pink centres. And it was British Fire Week as well. Um, so I was really, really indulged in them. I actually took about five cents home and I've got this stunning photo of them in my kitchen. And I absolutely fell in love with them. And it was then really that I sort of sparked more of an interest in getting into kind of gardening myself. Um, and although I always had rental properties, so I'm, I want to make this as accessible to everyone. Um, you don't have to have a massive amount of space. Um, you can do things from pots and um, you can do things on balconies. Um, there's a whole range. And I'm going to try and dip into a little bit. So I'm, I'm going to sort of cover things vaguely. Um, I do want to touch back on, um, back in March, and um, you had on here the fabulous Nicola from the Floral Project. Um, if you haven't heard of her, um, go and have a look. The video is absolutely fantastic. Um, she basically covers, um, well, her business started um, initially uh, when she wanted to grow flowers. And she realised, and um, I'm going to cover this a little bit more in detail as we're moving on, um, but the air miles and um, how unsustainable um, buying flowers, um, you know, your standardised flowers are. And um, so she's put together um, this fantastic 
um, community. It's just so heartwarming. And it's encouraging you to grow and to give them away um, because she sort of grew in abundance initially. And she was somebody that didn't grow, had never been in a garden. So if you're looking for advice um, on starting kind of um, annuals um, and planting seeds, um, and I'm going to try and go towards perennials a little bit more. I've picked out some favourites to talk to you about today. Um, and so, yeah, I'll cover very briefly perennials, but I don't want to overindulge you on that um, at this point. So going back, I then started collecting um, some flowers um, and plants and started growing them in pots. Um, one of the, my favourite... <coughs> Um, was Alcamilla Monis, uh, which is this one here. Um, it's, it's, it's growing in abundance at the moment. Um, it's a really lovely um, perennial and um, it likes shade, it's not overly that fussy, um, it's happy in a pot. Um, it can be quite a thirsty one, um, so if you've got it in pots, um, particularly in this hot weather, make sure you water it um, lots. Um, if you don't cut it all, it will sell seed, so it spreads amazingly. Absolutely fabulous if you're a florist um, or um, looking at just growing some for jam jars. So I'm not pushing you all um, to kind of grow in abundance. I'm literally just wanting to share the joy of cutting a vase full. And I guarantee you, if you've got a garden, you will be absolutely amazed um, if you go out this evening to fill one of these so we've all got them jam jars um so my aim is to get you out to get you cut in um to enjoy the absolute pleasure and um, that filling a vase or a jam jar full from your garden brings and um, it's a delightful um addition to any table perfect little gift um, if you're going over to someone and um, so right Let's get on with a couple of my favourites. So that's a little bit of um, a concept and a history about myself. Um, we moved forward heavily in lockdown. And although we've been working with um, my grower, Maria, um, she has really, 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 really started growing tons more this year, which I've got a nice variety to show you. And we've really adapted the business to use um, a lot more local and uh, British produce. Um, to start with the prices absolutely hoiked in lockdown of the Dutch stuff and um, it was really difficult. It was lockdown um, and um, Brexit. So we were struggling to get certain flowers into the country, flowers were having to go around the houses to get into the country. Um, it was so difficult, prices were through the roof, and I'm talking things that were like 50p to kind of 70p had gone up to like £1.20 a stem. And um, it was ridiculous. Um, the prices of things, and to try and make a profit um, on cut flowers was really difficult. And we had to be quite clever. Um, on how to kind of arrange in a bouquet so that you're getting the most out of it, how to make it look full and lush, um, how to get the best for your money. So we really started looking into British and we found some fabulous wholesalers in the UK, actually in Spalding. So we're based in Lincolnshire. And most of the flowers that we use are actually within a 40 mile radius. Um, of Lincolnshire. So they started supplying us. Uh, we've got about three suppliers that we use. I mainly use Maria, she's literally down the road from me. So she um, made, she's called um, Ivy and George Flowers. And um, then we use another company who go a little bit further afield. And um, so we have a little bit of Cornish stuff. We have some Scottish stuff coming in. Um, and at the moment, um, they are, haven't got any here of theirs, um, but we've got stocks. Um, we've just come into the end of peonies, really. Pinks are coming in, absolutely beautiful scents. 
And one thing um, sort of Nicholas said sort of from the floral project is that the flowers don't have as much of an aroma um, when they're Dutch. Um, so the reason being really is, um, there's two reasons. Partly, um, there's a lot of hybrids that they use, so you don't get the scent from them. Um, they're kind of forced on, and those varieties don't have as good a sort of flavour, um, shall we say. It's also because the flowers are stored and they're so cold. Um, so it kind of stops the scent coming out. Sometimes once you get them home, they begin to kind of let off a bit more scent as you warm them up gradually. But um, yeah, so it's, it's mainly you don't get the flavours from your Dutch stuff as we do with the British. And even more so if you go into your garden and you pick your own. Um, there's just something about homegrown cut flowers um, that has the best scent ever. Um, so our British um, stocks um, back um, sort of in March for Mother's Day, things we had them in. Um, so they are growing in greenhouses um, here. Um, I do have a grower who doesn't grow them in greenhouses um, so that we can get them a little bit later on the year. Um, but growing in greenhouses, they are absolutely spectacular in the UK. You have, I've never seen such long stocks. Um, so you don't need to grow loads, you could just have a small little area in a greenhouse um, for stocks. Um, they are so fresh, um, we find the vase life of the British um, flowers are so much longer, so they haven't been stored, they haven't been transported, they haven't been kept cool in a fridge for weeks on end. Um, so yeah, but they are spectacular. If you can find a florist who grows more British or supplies British, if they can't grow, they supply, um, then I would definitely recommend going to get some. The longevity of the flowers is amazing. You can get better scent and um, better quality, personally, um, I feel. And you get a service that I think really cares about the environment and the community. And um, yeah, it's, it's just fabulous to be part of. So that's a little bit about me. So in lockdown, we started really pushing British. Um, we um, developed boxes, um, because obviously our shop couldn't be open, um, that were posted out. Um, and they were 100% British, 100% sustainable. We provided video tutorials because we couldn't see you in person and we were missing doing workshops and teaching. And um, it meant that you could have something A to do in your home. Yes, it was cold over the winter. No, we didn't have an abundance of flowers and plants in our garden. Um, so it was the perfect thing that you needed um, to get yourselves kind of that little bit of a quench that we needed over kind of the festive period. And um, sort of running up to that, um, so we developed um, these fabulous British boxes and they really did go down a treat. Um, so there was all sorts of things. Um, we had lilies in them. Uh, we had the beautiful um, ornamental cabbages. You know, you can get them in purples and whites. Um, and we had eurydiums, all British. Um, so I'm going to talk now a little bit about why um and what to grow when and kind of my favorites we'll also have a little chance to um ask questions and um, so i'm gonna try and get my favorites out um and we can talk about your favorites um i'm by no means an expert gardener um i'm a florist and um, ask me about arranging and how to handle flowers and i'll probably know um i know a little bit about growing um, and gardening, um, but I'm no expert by any measures. Um, I have my favourites, they're what I've kind of shared with you today. Um, and we've also um, can do a little arrangement at the end with um, some cut flowers from the garden. And um, so as a florist, um, I would probably select um, sort of fillers, um, some foliage, and um, some focal flowers, so some kind of bigger flowers, 
and to go in my arrangements. And often I kind of think about a palette, so a colour palette that I'm going to stick to. So I find personally, and I'm aiming this today um, just to get you out and cutting and looking at your plants and just looking at things differently because um, we've gone into foraging a little bit because I appreciate some people don't have a garden as well. So that you can have a varied vase of flowers or jam jar full of flowers um, because everyone has a jam jar. Um, I appreciate that you don't all have um, vases at home but everyone's got a jam jar or an old Uncle Ben's jar or a honey jar, anything in their cupboard. Um, so they come in such a vast variety of shapes and sizes and uh, we've even got like, little milk bottles here as well. So there's literally no excuse for this. Um, you need a jam jar in the evening, something to drink, so ideally a glass of wine. Um, and the best time to cut is in the evenings. Um, so you could cut them and as long as they go on water and they have a good drink, sometimes in the cool can help them, um, then you're gonna have a fabulous little vase of flowers. And um, we're not going to talk about tonal palettes, okay? We're just going to go out, we're going to pick, we're going to enjoy. Um, and I find the garden kind of flowers, it lends itself to having a kind of broader palette. Um, so we can add in, you can see this gorgeous rose here at the front. We can add in yellows with the pinks. Um, it kind of works, the flowers are softer, they're fluffier, and it all works together really nicely. Right, so we're talking about initially um, doing some annual planting. So these are things that you would plant in the spring, and they're going to flower through the year, and that's it, you have to replant them again in the next spring. So things that I've got here at the moment, uh, we've got, can you see these beautiful cosmos? So these are fabulous flower. Um, if you want something easy to grow from home, get yourself some cosmos. Um, I've grown them in pots um, and they behave really well. Sometimes they can go a little bit leggier, but I think that actually works quite well when you're looking to cut for the vase and um, so you can get some taller stems. The more you cut um, Cosmos, the more it, you, it flowers, so it kind of gives back. So 100% get yourself some Cosmos. A variety of colours, you can get whites, purples, pinks, um, all sorts. So a little stunning flower there. Um, so some that I haven't got here um, that I kind of like to use and we're thinking kind of forward throughout the year um, so if I can't use them now I would potentially dry them um, and use them on wreaths and things in Christmas or store them for the spring um, to use on kind of more spring wreaths. Um, so one of my favourites is Amaranthus, um, some of you might know it as Love Lies Beading, it was one that my nan um, always grew so it makes me think about her comes in a variety of colours, you can actually get a really lovely upward growing one, you probably know the one that kind of drapes over, um, a kind of a red um, long drape and it has kind of lime green foliage, it's a really lovely contrasting um, colour with that foliage, um, so that comes in um, lots of different varieties of colours. You can dry those beautifully um, and, <coughs> excuse me, dry them beautifully and they are absolutely perfect for Christmas wreaths. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, so then moving on to, um, they love being in kind of borders and they're sunny flowers um, and they appreciate um, kind of any soil. And um, so they're kind of nice with the fronts of borders and that sort of thing. Beautiful filler, really nice focal flower. And um, so that could be one that you could choose and be a kind of a bigger um, focal flower. Um, so I'm gonna talk about kind of your four things that you need to do. So we've, we've said um, foliage, we need fillers, focal flowers. Um, so they're, they're your three initially that you need to have a think about. Um, I tend to use about five things in a vase. 
um, sort of flower wise along with some foliage. Um, so if you really want to kind of think about cutting and um, to make a nice balanced vase or to grow, um, we'll talk about things to have a look for in a minute and we'll really get you kind of going out, having a look, assessing things differently because um, when you start to kind of have a good forage around, you'll notice things that you wouldn't necessarily think about putting in a bouquet. And I want you to kind of consider those now. Have a good think about it. Right, so the next one we've got is anti rhinums and I did have some in here. Sorry, my little anti rhinum doesn't look all that happy at the moment because he, uh, I think I forgot to put him in the vase properly last night. So sorry, little anti rhinum. Um, so do make sure that you fill your vases up enough with water. Um, we'll cut him off and we'll see if we can get him to revive. So anti rhinums, um, absolutely delightful in groups. I love group planting these and spreading them out. And they'll often self seed for next year. So they're a beautiful little annual. Um, I love these with lime greens. So the um, how Camilla Mollis that I mentioned to you earlier, absolutely beautiful um, as a lime green. Um, so it's really nice and fresh um, and zingy this time of year. Um, so we've got an extensive array, array of colours with these. And um, you've also got an extensive array of colours in the foliage. So if you really want to have a think about um, mixing tones and textures together and different colours, um, have a look at your anti rhinums and really look for some unusual um, leaves and foliage to have a look at. Um, you can also pinch these out. So once you've planted the, them up and they've started to kind of begin to flower, you can pinch the central um, flower out and it encourages the out, you know, the outer um, flowers to kind of grow and it encourages the plant to kind of bush out a little bit. Um, so you can kind of think about what you want to achieve with your flowers as to whether you pinch out or you don't. If you don't pinch things out, you tend to get a tall central stem, which is lovely if you want to do some kind of bigger bouquets with um, some real big focal flowers. Um, but if you pinch the centre out of things, then they'll often kind of branch out and you get lots of smaller things. So you actually get, I think, a better crop um, but they're slightly smaller, so they're ideal for kind of shorter vases and jam jars. Um, so anti are one of those that you can do that with. Move me on to zinnias. They are um, my grower, um, Maria from Ivy and George. She grows loads of zinnias in loads of different colours. Um, it's not something that I've ever grown yet, but I will at some point. Um, stunning lime greens they're probably one of the sort of only flowers um that you pick when they're like in full bloom um, and one way to kind of test them if they're ready to cut is you can kind of wiggle the stems of them and if they're nice and firm and straight then they're ready to cut um so yes let me know what your favorites are as i'm running through this i've literally picked my absolute favorites and things that i think are interesting and a little bit unusual um so let me know what your favourites and then I'm going to come and have a, a read through your comments in a minute. Um, the next one, which you've probably grown at some point in your life, um, a lovely one for uh, growing with kids, um, is we've got sunflowers. Um, again, so these are also in, in the spring and um, then you can plant them out. Um, my other favourite, and one of my growers grows loads of these and so I don't grow any, um, is um, status, so you might know, I've heard of kind of paper flowers, um, so you've got status, um, helichrysums, um, so these are also in, in the spring again, and they dry, so if you're looking to do kind of reeds dried arrangements, because um, they're really coming back into fashion now, and um, they dry really beautiful, and I think a lot of people call them forever flower, um, Linonium, which is your status, you get different sizes, um, is in a real array of different colours um, as well. So from kind of whites, yellows, all through those kind of purples, you can get like a dark pinky red one. Um, yeah, love them. Helichrysums, and um, we use on our wreaths here. So we have kind of a range of wreaths that we do. Um, so yeah, absolutely stunning. 
Right, so I'm going to go through this vase now um, and show you some examples um, of what I got last night. And I was actually, I came in last night and I was actually surprised what we had in the garden. Um, and we've only been here since September. So we haven't really had a lot of time. Um, it, work has been absolutely full on for me. Um, so I haven't had as much time as I would like to grow and to have a look at the garden. It is very wild at times and in certain areas. So a lot of them are either self-seeded, a lot of them are perennials, some I have had for years in pots. Okay, so one of my favourites, here we go, I cut him a little bit early, so this is going to still be, so it's absolutely fabulous um, for wedding work, um, it's a nice little short one, um, so it'll be perfect for putting in jam jars and things. And um, These ones actually like partial shade, um, and they do like a fertile soil, so you could have a look at getting some plants of these or some seeds, um, so it's probably easier to get some plants at this time of year and you can start um, popping in some beautiful stilby. So I've chosen this red, sort of dark red one, um, it comes in whites and pinks, a real variety of kind of palette as well. Um, the spikes just, I adore them, um, it, it sort of opens up and it's really fluffy. Um, they do like um, to be well watered in the vase. Um, so make sure um, if you're cutting them, you've got plenty of water in that vase and then they stand up nice and strong. Um, so they're the absolute favourite of mine. I'm just going to pop them there. Um, so when you're going out in your garden, this is what I picked last night, okay? And I had a little think about getting a broad variety of different things. So your first focus really should be on getting some foliage. Um, so this is one, um, so this is lamb deers. has anyone got any of this growing in their garden? Gorgeous texture, again it's actually one that I really like to press and use on reeds later on. Um, so a nice variety if you can of foliage, um, so that's my lamb's ears. I've also got an absolute abundance of climbers. So I'm kind of, I feel like I'm dotting around here, but I'm, I'm going to go back and I'm kind of going to group things again. Um, so all we've really covered at the moment are our annuals, and I've given you a good list of those. Um, so they're things that you need to plant up in early in the year, or you can do it later in the year, um, and you can start to grow some lovely annuals, and they'll grow for the year, and then they'll self-seed um, towards the end of the year and you'll have to plant the seeds again. So we're moving on to um, perennials now, and so I'm covering a couple, um, but I'm also dipping over, I know they're kind of a perennial, but I class them more as a climber, um, and I do like to use a lot of climbers in my work. Um, I think it just adds, particularly to wedding work, that kind of flouncy fluffiness, um, that kind of loose um, kind of style that we're moving on into um, and the kind of colour palettes that I'm looking for, so kind of greens, lime greens opposed to that silvery blue um, at the moment. So this is a jasmine. It is in the sun in the morning for a little bit and it's not flowering quite as early as my other jasmines at the back of the house that are in full sun. So it's absolutely beautiful at the moment to use as foliage. Um, we have lots of long slender pieces um, which are perfect as a base structure in a vase. So again, I'm going to go back and we will talk about putting things in a vase and how to think about arranging um, very loosely. We'll sort of go into that. Um, this is my other jasmine. It's going to start um, dropping this one. Um, which has been in full sunshine. So you can think about where you're planting things now. Um, and the scent on this, I believe, and I'm not an expert, this is a Japanese one. Um, and I think that's because the scent is so beautifully strong on them. Um, and it's a yellow one. So 
absolutely gorgeous gotta have something scented if you can and the other climber that we have a little bit of um this i didn't pick this yesterday i picked this one last week is um clematis so you'll often go out into the garden you'll um if you're anything like my mum she'll go and she'll hack back all the jasmine all the clematis all the honeysuckle and um you know it's, it's kind of going rife isn't it at this time of year you've got long um tendrils all over the place so cut them off and use them as a base in a vase beautiful contrasting colors here um so it's actually i think a stunning color of foliage um, so go and grab yourself some and use it in a vase. It's such a lovely material for working with. Um, and then um, I'm going to touch back on herbs a little bit later on. Uh, but we've got some sage here. Um, absolutely fabulous scent. Um, I always feel that you need a good herb in um, your arrangement. Also, we say we use them in our jam jars that we sell in the shop here. Um, I don't think there's anything better than mint and herbs um, and something flavoursome in your jam jar on the table. It'll get everyone talking. So we grow the sage in a pot at the moment. Um, it will go in the ground. If you're looking at growing herbs, um, they're probably better in pots. Some of them are. Um, if you don't want me to take over your entire garden, um, keep it in a pot um, because the roots just go on forever and ever um, and you'll end up having mint and cursing me. Keep it in a pot unless you are a grower and you need it in abundance. Um, so that's that one. Okay, right, this one is a little bit of a strange one, um, and this is going to get you thinking ever so slightly. This is literally seeded grass that is growing in my lawn. So we've got a wild area, um, I don't know if you heard of No Mo May, um, so shall, shall we say we're having a No Mo year in our house? Um, so luckily we have two very large gardens, and the second one at the moment is kind of what we call the meadow. Um, so we've got tons of grass um, down there and uh, it's just it's not quite going to seed um, and it's so pretty I think it gives you that kind of delicate kind of floatiness that we're looking for um, it's got a nice sort of texture and movement and sound absolutely love it right another I think this is my last or my nearly my last foliage so this one is Dusty Miller a couple of years ago, I used this in nearly every wedding. We went through this phase of um, kind of crushed um, blush colours and um, silvery tones. So this is one that we used all of the time. It was really popular. Um, it's a nice thirsty one again. Um, so I give it a good water, make sure it's, it's got plenty of nice cold water in the jar. Um, it grows, you'll probably see it growing in car parks and things like that. Um, it, it's not particularly fussy plant-wise. Again, this one was in a, in a pot. It's slightly neglected, so it does get a bit leggy. You can kind of tell where I'm going with my garden here, can't you? Um, so slightly neglected. Okay, this leads me on to hookeras. Anyone got hookeras? Look at the size of that. It's a good size leaf, isn't it? So a nice... Um, again, this is in a pot. This is one that I haven't managed to get out of the pot yet since we've um, moved in. And he's shoved in a pot with some mint, believe it or not, and some astilbe. Um, and he's got some little violas growing around him. Um, yet he comes back every year. So he kind of dies back and I think he's gone and he's disappeared. A bit like the stilbies. A lot of your perennials do that. They'll die back to the ground. Um, and we get, so this beautiful coloured leaf. Um, I have got the name of it, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I do have one that's like a coral colour that is my favourite, and the leaves are all frilly um, and beautiful. Um, so have a look for some hookery leaves, nice stem length, beautiful, beautiful colours. So I'm just going to dip over, there's a little bit more of that grass. I'm going to dip over um, to my grower's flowers, and we can see this one just coming into shot. So look at the stem length on that. So this is a gorgeous hookra from my grower Ivy and George. And um, 
stunning, absolutely stunning stem length. Um, and this will flower for ages. And when it stops flowering, um, you'll end up with these little um, sort of baubles that dry. Um, and it'll still kind of last and you can still have a good long vase life with this. Um, so that's just beautiful isn't it? I'm going to pop that back over there because it's not from my garden. I'm trying to be true to my garden here. Um, right next, so we're going to move on. You've got your foliage in, that was number one. And then you need to decide if you want to grow any fillers or what fillers you have got in your garden. They're all a bit tangled up at the moment. So we've briefly talked about Alcamilla mollis, our little love, our shade loving plant, little bit of light. Um, absolutely gorgeous, um, grows in abundance, starts to spread after a couple of years. You can do a little bit of um, separating out in the autumn um, to divide them. Um, or if you don't cut your flowers, it will seed and it'll soon start spreading. So that's one of my fillers, one of my favourites. Um, this one um, is Feed With You. So again, we've got a little bit right down the bottom. It's actually grown under an apple tree. Um, and it is um, kind of, yeah, left to do its own thing. It's very happy down there. Um, it's a, again, a beautiful little dainty daisy. Um, it really adds to that kind of country just picked feel. So these are my fillets. If you guys want to tell me what your fillets are, I'm going to answer some questions in a second when I've finished going through my vase. And then we'll dip into some other little bits. Right, so there are my fillets. Um, this is another one. This is a weed. Well, it's not a weed, um, but it's it's not growing where I want it to. Um, so that one's coming up in the cracks. Um, okay, so these ones have self-seeded. So if you do plan to um, grow any nigella, um, this one is a nice self-seeded one in our garden. I am growing some a mixed packet as well. So we've got pinks and whites and things coming up, which I have um, sown a little bit late. Um, I am much more delayed than I would have liked to have been with things. Um, so this is going back to one of your annuals. Um, and if you're lucky enough, it will self-seed and you will get lots of beautiful little surprises um, in the spring popping up. So these are just starting to flower now. I have actually planted these around, well they, they've, they've seeded, sorry, around our strawberries. Um, so yeah, have a think about growing vegetables and things. If you haven't sort of dipped into kind of Sarah Raven, she particularly um, sort of advocates growing vegetables and fruits and things together and lots of your flowers. So although these are dainty, I'm going to call them one of my focal flowers. Um, and I think again, they just sit so nicely together. I'm not going to be too fussy about colours and things. We're just going with what the garden like provided us last night. I've talked to you about Cosmos, so I'm not going to talk about that again. There's another little bit of um, honeysuckle. So we're moving on to, look at these, Rose Campions, or the common name might be Catchflies, I think. Um, this again is, um, it comes up everywhere in the garden. Um, you have to pick this one, it's just started flowering. Um, again, it likes a good drink. Um, so yes, I picked it when it's got these flowers that just popped open and we've still got some buds coming. Um, so yeah, a pretty little one, isn't it? I love the vibrancy of the colours of these. Um, so that's why I picked it. Um, whether you want to call that a focal flower or not um, is up to you. If you wanted to use quite a lot of that together, it could be more of a filler. Um, but I'm going to say it's, it's my focal flower. It's because it's such a lovely, strong vibrancy. And um, that's going to be my little focal flower. Right, the next one. Again, self-seeded in our garden. In fact, I think all my fox gloves are, are self-seeded. Um, right down the row bottom, we've got a white one. Uh, let me know if you've got any white, because I think they're a little bit more difficult to grow. Um, they leave a nice little bit of ground cover for the winter. And it's a little bit of protection. Um, I think, I believe they're poisonous, so you have to be a little bit careful with them. 
um, but uh, I think they are just stunning. If you can bear to cut them, um, then bring one in or two in from the garden. Absolutely beautiful stem length. And we use them a lot in bouquets here. Um, so they're an absolutely spot on vocal flower. So thinking again about it foraging, um, I've kind of had a good route around. Um, this is, um, one of my friend's favourites, Aquilegia, always makes me think of her. Um, so if you've got it flowering in your garden, um, or is it Granny's Bonnet, I think they're called? Um, if you've got it flowering in your garden, um, at this point in time, depending on whether it's sun or uh, shade in the shade or which way it's facing, we have got some in seed. Um, so I'd really like you to start considering the seed heads. Um, obviously not all of them if you want things to sell seed. Um, but have a look at them, have a look at the shapes and the forms, um, um, seeing some poppy seed heads on the side of the road and things. Um, so you can sort of start collecting mindfully. And this is a little bit open, it's got a very delicate scent and it's actually um, a little climbing rose that is um, climbing up a little pagoda down the bottom of our garden. Um, it's got a really soft blushy colour to it. Um, so I picked it because it just sort of made me feel like wedding work. Um, it has got some nice long stems. I didn't over, I didn't cut a very long stem because I knew we were doing jam jars. Um, so yes, have a look at some roses. Um, I know a few of ours have been sort of bashed and things in the rain um, last week. So that's that one. Right, I'm going to flick over while I just talk about um, these other two flowers. And I'm just going to have a little, oh, I've lost my comments now have a little talk about hello everyone good morning thank you for joining me feel free to ask me any questions catch you later right what is the name of the blue thistle you had in your jar i'm going to come to that in a minute any advice on growing star gladioli please i will message you about that Right, let's pop back. So I have got another two here. Uh, we've got some lavender, um, so it's just coming into flower. Um, so if you want to kind of start to dry anything, hang it up to dry, um, the best time is before, or at it, when it's at its peak, when it's at its absolute peak. Um, so you can um, cut it when it's yeah, absolutely perfect. Um, some just before they start to flower, so things like echinops and things um, you should grow before they pop open into the blue flower, so when they're nice little tight balls, um, otherwise all the seeds kind of fall out if you let it flower. Um, I absolutely adore using those in my rooms, um, they're one of my, on my list of things to grow. Um, so yes, lavender, great perennial, um, you can cut it back quite harshly um sort of twice a year and you get a much better crop from it um i see so many lavenders that have gone all woody and leggy um and you can be quite brutal with them um so cut them back get them into a nice shape and then you have to do that again sort of midway through the year just to get it to keep its shape so i've added those in for flavor so i do like to really think about scents textures um, and a range of colours potentially, scents, textures and colours, so they're my favourites. Um, so on here next we've got these little pinks, they were only a short one, but they are again absolutely fabulous flavours, so I'll add that into my little vase, he's just poking in there. So I'm going to go back later when I've finished um, talking about the last of my flowers or what I've got going on over here and um, right so this one we have some great British um Eurindiums someone's just asked me about this uh, we have this in abundance at the moment or we can get hold of it um a British grown one in abundance um it grows, this is quite a small stem, but they are more like tree trunks, and um, the ones that we can get hold of. Um, so 
yeah, a lovely one. Um, if you want to kind of start growing something um, that comes back, um, that's quite sturdy. Um, often you get a good lot of height with them. Absolutely love them. Absolutely love them. And um, you can get them in a range of colours, so blues and whites. Um, I'll pop him. I'm going to pop them in my jar there. Um, Alstromira. Look at this, I've got a little pink one. And then this one's from my mummy's garden. This one is a gorgeous little yellow. Look at it, it's got little tiger stripes coming down um, the edge of it. So again, another favourite, has a fabulous vase life. Um, if you want to grow something. Right, this one I use all the time, literally all the time. Can't ever get enough of it. Um, it is Estrantia. There we go. So it likes dappled um, or full shade. Um, they have multiple little heads on them, um, really gorgeous clusters. And um, it comes in a variety of colours. So you've got your white um, and your pinks. Um, a gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous perennial. Um, can't get enough of these. You can divide these up again, stick them up, divide them up between October and March. Um, and yes, you can get more in abundance. Um, so yeah, you only need a couple of stems of things. You don't need to go too wild. I've done the Alka Miller um, already. So, this little vase, I briefly touched on it, is from my grower um, in just down the road from me. And um, she's, I asked her to put together um, a vase of 10 things that she thought would be of interest to talk about. And this is what she came up with. Um, I have to say, she has an absolute eye for colour palettes. Um, and is very particular about tones and things that she puts together. Um, so much so that I often give her rain um, and say, free rain to go, yes, go out and uh, some, you know, pick such and such, and I'm happy for you to do it for me and some mixed tones and things. Um, so she's fabulous. Um, look at this rose. It has the absolutely most delightful scent on it. How stunning is that? I didn't ask what it was called, so I'm sorry about that, but I can't find out. Lots of layers of petals in there. Really stunning. So this is a great focal flower. So if you're gonna choose five things to grow. You need a little bit of variety, um, and you need some fillers um, that we've talked about, um, and then you need maybe two focal flowers, or things that you've favoured. Um, if you're looking at growing a cutting bed and you just want flowers that are just for cutting and nothing else, um, do definitely have a mixture um, of different things. Don't just grow one thing. Um, try and grow sort of a handful of different things. Look at this one. Look at the size of this. So this is mint. Um, that is, I know this is grown in her garden. Look at the length of that. It's on the table, and um, see, so we've got probably about 40 centimetres, if not more, of mint there. Um, a little tip with mint, grow it slightly in the shade and let the weeds grow amongst it, and then you get good long stems. There you go. Uh, this one's um, a gorgeous one. This one is called pineapple mint. Has anyone got any interest in mint growing in the garden? Gorgeous, gorgeous colour. I love using this. I've used it in a lot of kind of funeral work um, as well. Um, just an interest of kind of foliage, particularly for sort of um, male funerals. And um, we've been using, look at that again. We've been using a real mixture um, of, and that's an apple mint, I believe. Um, a real mixture of different textures and foliage. The smell of these is so lovely. I feel like I need a pin. So um, when to cut flowers, cut in the evening, go out um, in the evening, cut your flowers um, when it's not too sunny, that's the ideal. Um, so next one, look at the movement in those. So this is something else we think about when we're selecting things for bridal bouquets, um, is movement. So we talked about kind of texture briefly. Um, but walking with the bouquet and the movement and the kind of feel that that portray portrays, um, is really important. So these are bunny tail grasses. Um, you can again grow these annually, I believe. 
and uh, love them, absolutely love them. Beautiful dried, absolutely beautiful dried. They're so soft. They've got that tactileness as well that I feel that flowers sometimes need. You kind of want to bury your nose in them. Um, this one, uh, we've moved on to kind of um, a few bulbs. I wasn't going to cover bulbs too much because um, that's a whole other area. Um, but um, alliums, these are gorgeous ones. So these are popping their heads up. I think they're absolutely stunning if they're planted amongst other things. Um, so if you've got them like popping up around roses and hydrangeas, um, just popping through the middle um, to give you that height um, and just kind of different colours at kind of the right time of year. Stunning. Loads of different sizes, loads of different colours you can get of these. Um, so if you buy these in bulb, I believe you would be planting these out in the autumn, I do, if you buy in bulbs. We do have some plants um, sort of in our little nursery here. Um, so yeah, have a look at your garden centres or local nurseries. Look at these! How many of you have got violas or pansies that are still pressing on through? I tell you, if there's a giving flower out there, it's these. And I think it's one that I would probably recommend if you fancy growing something um, and you're a first time grower. They're a lovely, really, again, giving flower. Not only that, but you can eat them so they're nice and salads and things like that. Um, look at the stem length. Real good leggy stem on that. Um, I will touch on briefly a little bit of violas at some point. Um, an absolutely lovely, lovely, lovely row. They seed really quickly as well, so you could save the seeds. So many different varieties of colours. Look at those. So these, um, you would be planting up much later, so you do see it's later in the year. So you've got your biennials. These would be clusters, I believe. So we'll cover some biennials quickly, some of my favourites, things that you should be doing now in a minute. Because I know all of these that we've kind of covered are things that have been planted up in the spring and we're kind of at the point of cutting them now. Um, but what should you be doing in the garden now? So I'm going to briefly come back to that. Look at this, this is another one. Gorgeous, gorgeous colour. So many textures and tones in that. Lovely in a bouquet, lovely in a vase. Proper nice, uh, proper good country garden. Here we go. Cornflowers. Has anyone seen this colour? I believe this is a Sarah Raven one. Of her seeds. Gorgeous, rich kind of um, aubergine colour, we call it. Um, so you get uh, multiple stems on here. Once that flower dies, um, that one head dies, you'll end up getting um, the little buds opening and multiple multiple flowers on a stem there. Uh, it's also got um, some more hookahs, hookah and foliage. This is a lovely one. A little bit more of a rich and um, kind of, it's got a, a shimmer on the back of it. How lush is that? And then, if who is uh, growing sweet peas? Who's got any sweet peas in the garden? So these are our annuals. And uh, I'm absolutely in love with them this year. For some reason, yes, I love sweet peas. I've always been a fan. But for some reason this year, um, they've really, really got me going. And um, it's, I'll tell you what I love about them. It's these. Can you see all the little tendrils coming off? Um, a lot of the bouquets and things I've been doing have been much more textured, much more interesting foliage um in the moment and yeah i think that's why i love them so much not only that but they smell divine don't they there isn't a better scent i don't believe than a sweet pea um flower at the moment um what other colors have we got here we go so we've got slightly longer lavender color i did a, a wedding actually last week and uh she wanted a mixture of kind of lavenders and soft pinks in her arrangement. And then the delphinium. So a little bit of a showstopper in the garden, isn't it? Um, these gorgeous spicy flowers, much like um, your foxglove, um, you might have lupins, um, absolutely stunning. So this is, I would cast this as a focal flower. Um, 
absolutely stunning. Giving flower. So one of my favourites. So I had so much trouble. I feel like I'm giving you an, an absolute abundance of flowers here, but I found it really hard to stop myself um, with my list. And I just kept on going and going and going. Um, I talked about briefly a strand here. We had a white one earlier, um, but this is a pink one. Um, again, absolute favourite of mine. I love this colour. Beautiful in wedding work as well. Um, but I'm just going to cover one more because I'm excited by it. And then I'm going to try and control my excitement. Um, is this one, can you see? This is called a little corn cockle. Um, so they come in pinks and whites, all sorts of different colours. And um, well, this one I believe is called a silver one. Um, but it, it, to me, when it's in a bouquet, it just glistens for some reason. It's got this real ability to kind of reflect the light back um, and have this gorgeous shimmery. Maybe that's why they call it um, silver. Um, so there we go. That is um, pretty much my favourites. Um, we've covered you three kind of tips um, on um, cutting some foliage, um, cutting some fillers if you can, having a look at things differently, so things of interest, um, so grasses and seed heads, having a look at your weeds potentially, things that aren't growing when you want them to, and also having a focal flower, if not two in there. And um, so go and pick five things, um, if you like, if you're looking at doing a cutting garden, and pick things that you love. Um, and the reason I say that is, because if you love them, you're more likely to look after them better. The better you look after them, the better your yield is. Um, so make sure you plant your things out, um, you know, in a good time. Don't leave them too long. Make sure you're watering them. You can feed them. Uh, make sure you're researching, you know, if they need a certain soil or not. Um, so yeah, it's simple. You can all do it. Um, you can grow your annuals on your windowsill. You can get them started um, in your windowsill. You can then um, pop them in plastic boxes if you haven't got a greenhouse. That was an absolutely fun, fabulous tip um, that I absolutely adored that um, Nicola gave you from the floral project. Right, so. The only thing that I don't think I've covered um, really at this point in a lot of depth um, is sort of roses. Um, so again, there's a mixture of roses. You've got um, climbers, ramblers, floral bundas, you've got miniatures. Um, just again, if you love them, if you want something small and a miniature in a small pot and you haven't got a lot of garden, then that's always accessible. Um, you can grow things on your windowsill. Um, you know, there are house plants that you can use as cut flowers as well. Um, I don't know if that defeats the object um, of, you know, getting you out in the garden. Um, but I'm happy for you guys to be as creative as you can. Um, a couple of shrubs as well that I've not covered. Because um, I feel like I've gone down a herby climber route with my foliage. Um, shrubs and things that I love. Um, we've got hydrangeas, hypericums. Um, and Philadelphus at the moment, um, beautiful scent, absolutely lovely sturdy um, stems and flowers, um, a beautiful one. And you could even use lavender and things if you've, if you've got that growing in your garden. So yeah, I've literally just gone, I ah, love all these things and uh, yes, got really excited. Right, while I'm arranging, I'm going to give you a few top tips on arranging. And then I'm going to just tell you some things um, that you could be doing now um or to consider um for kind of um your spring spring flowering things um so you don't necessarily have to go out and plant seeds you could pop to a garden center you could see if you could swap plants with somebody and um, but these are things that i would consider popping in now almost seeing if you can get hold of um and then you will have some fabulous um color for the spring um, so, have a little look at getting some wallflowers or some wallflower seeds. Um, 
they are a great one so something that you can do now um, you can also have a think about forget me not forget me nots um, so you could be thinking about planting those up in um, July um, and then I think the other one that you can consider um, really a sweet wills I haven't actually got any of those so back to a jam jar popping things in the jam jar um, I'm going to just start with my foliage can you see okay we'll make this very quick because I'm, I'm, we're coming up to that hour and um, what I tend to do is I gather some foliage that I like the look of to start with. Um, things that interest me. This is generally what I'm going to grow in my garden. Um, what I'm going to buy from my grower. And I'm going to deliberately use lots of little bits of different things. Because you're going around your garden. You don't necessarily want to hack your plants back. Um, because you're not a cutting garden. Um, you're just growing, you're just looking for something nice to go in your vase. Um, so I've got a mixture of different things. Um, so I've chosen three foliage in here, the mints, the hookahs, and some of the um, climbers um, that we discussed. And I've just popped them in, so they're draping over the edges of my jam jar. Um, make sure your jam jar is clean and your water is cool, okay? That's all you really need to do and fresh. That's how you get the longevity from your flowers. Cool and fresh. We can talk about, you know, flower foods, how to cut them, da da da, but we're not. Um, we're just going to keep it nice and simple. So I've got three foliages. If you can just got one, that's fine. You're going to drape them over the edges of your vase. I'm then going to go in with some uh, fillers. So I've got my strontia. And then again, I'm kind of draping them over the edges of the vase. Um, and the more I put in of this, the more it will kind of um, crunch up, not crunch up, but they'll fill up a little bit. And we'll get a little bit more stability. Because um, we're kind of creating a crisscross in our jam jar. So we probably don't need a huge amount more than, again, three pieces. I'm going to deliberately use what I got from my garden because I want you to be able to go out in your garden, keeping in mind that I'm not a grower, I'm not an expert gardener, um, and things are neglected. They have been shoved in pots and slightly forgotten about points. Uh, we do have a very wild garden as well because we're in very busy, busy, busy business. Um, so I'm using my seed heads, I'm using my favourites, I'm using my stilby. Um, and again, I'm now being able to add things in in a slightly higher fashion um, because they are being supported now. Um, and it's a lovely sustainable kind of way of being able to arrange in a jam jar and moving away from oasis and such like. Um, so I've popped in a couple of these little rose campions as well and then I'm going to add in my stunning fox glove. So he's just going to dip over to the side. You can get away with not even the arranging, we're not using any consistent kind of patterns um, or theories here. Um, you're just popping things in as you feel it's fit, things that you love. Um, I'm going to be cheeky and just use some of these sweet peas. I did say that I was going to use for my garden, but these are too delicious. And I feel that the colour is going to work so nicely all together. So the sweet peas, I'm just going to let them drape over the side ever so slightly. Leaving those absolutely stunning tendrils on, like so. There we go. You don't need a huge amount in there, do you? Shall we use Maria's rose as well? It smells delightful. I really wish there was a smell button at this point, but there isn't. What a shame. You're just going to have to get out with your cup of um, tea or your um, glass of wine tonight. It's a beautiful day here. I hope you're all enjoying the weather and it's as stunning where you are as it is here. Um, so get out, have a look in your garden tonight, grab yourself a jam jar or a vase and um, see what you can see what you can fill. Um, I would absolutely love to see your makes. 
Um, so please, 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 you can post them on here um, or you can follow us on Facebook um, at Blooming Crafty and um, have a share. And um, if you've asked any questions and there was about specific things plant wise, I'm just having a quick dip across to your comments um, and I will answer those. Um, I feel like I shouldn't have... Uh, been on here as long. Such beautiful flowers and colours. What is the large red and yellow flower in the front, please? Is that this one that you saw? Um, I'll go back and I'll answer your questions later. Hey, finish. Yes, that's a great tip that I forgot to tell you. I got so carried away. This one's a rose, a lovely little variegated rose. Yeah, it's from my mum's garden. But yes, don't. Um, we talked about fresh water. Thank you for that. A uh, little tip. So to get the most out of your vase um, is to reduce um, the amount of foliage that is going in your water. Um, so fresh water, keep it cool, cut them at night um, and don't get any foliage in your water. So make sure your stems are really nice and clean. Um, so yes, this is really to get you out there cutting to in your garden enjoying such a lovely material to wear with um, there's something so rewarding about it um, so I do appreciate we haven't really been that technical and um, when it comes to the floristry today um, we've just talked about a lot of our beautiful favourites and uh, to get out there and to hopefully either cut or to do some growing um, so thank you so much for joining me and um, please feel free to send me some messages if you've got any inquiries um, about growing or cutting I will try and answer them and um, if you have um, got any advice and you fancy sharing it on here and what any questions then it, um, it would be lovely um, to kind of get everyone connected and um, have a little chat so um, thank you so much again to the Virtual Village Hall for having me on it's an absolute pleasure to be part of such a wonderful organisation um, and community and um, I absolutely love coming on and having a chat to you. Um, so thank you and um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.